Turkmenistan, a Central Asian nation near the Caspian Sea. Known for its rivaling nomadic tribes, making it a common place for rising conflict more often than not. But in western Turkmenistan, a small group of eight rather peculiar tribes exist. While at first glance they may seem to just be another group of nomads, posing no threat to anyone aside from the other opposing tribes in the immediate area, they are anything but ordinary. Shrouded in mystery, it is of SCP Foundation belief that they may be a significant threat due to the many questions still unanswered regarding their origins. The most dire of question of all isn't where they came from, but when. SCP-3838, Nomads of the Fourth Dimensional Steppe, is a collection of eight nomadic tribes, occupying a small area of 10 kilometers. They all seem to be of similar origin, but they are very different in behavior and in the way they interact with outsiders. While multiple tribes can share the same space, they don't all exist in the space at the same time. Periodically, the current tribe will perform a ritual. With two flames near the entrance, they will enter a yurt and vanish. They will then soon be replaced by another tribe. This new tribe will appear, seemingly having traveled from another time, though the Foundation is unable to determine how exactly this ritual works. All the tribes typically survive off the goats and sheep in the area and live in huts. Their religions and traditions vary. Each group has its own Khan and speaks the same dialect of Turkmen, but interaction with the groups has led to some bizarre revelations. For one thing, their dialect was last commonly spoken in the 15th century. Some of these groups are humble traders, others are hostile and warlike, and the Foundation rarely knows which they'll be dealing with next. While these groups all occupy the same place, but not the same time, they have developed unique ways around this issue. The tribes seem to treat time the same way other groups treat location, forming treaties that allow them to benefit when they switch into the space. But while some choose peace, others choose war. Observations made by the Foundation have proven that when a new tribe appears, violence and attacks from them are not only common, but have been growing significantly more volatile over time. Unlike many SCPs, the nomads of the fourth dimensional steppe are not new. They have been occupying this land since at least 1696, when they were first sighted. However, initial sightings were not made by the Foundation, which at that time didn't exist in its current form. It was after a massive battle approximately three millennia earlier that the Devan e Jedua, or Office of Magic, picked up reports of disappearing tents. Over the years, they have slowly but consistently amassed more and more knowledge of the eight tribes now designated as SCP-3838. Each tribe exists in the same geographic space, but they come from a different era of history and bring with them different culture, traditions, technology, and weaponry. The space itself changed drastically, from its earliest days as a holy site in the 15th century BCE to a bustling marketplace in the 1800s. The marketplace is of particular interest to the Foundation, as it is said to possess strange and magical items like guns that shoot bolts of light and arrows that follow their targets. Both the 15th century holy site and the marketplace are unique locations in time. They are the only two places that manifest when the tribes interact and hold councils and negotiations. Each of these tribes bring unique challenges and opportunities for the Foundation. SCP-3838-1 is one of the smallest tribes, a humble group of vendors. They only appear in the communal marketplace in the 18th century, but are believed to be from the 2nd and 3rd century CE, and they are known as excellent potters. If you see them, the odds are they're trying to sell you some nice earthenware pots, but while they're not relevant to the larger conflict, they are a unique group for one reason. They've followed the Manichaean religion instead of Islam, and are strong believers in the religion's dualist battle between good and evil, the latter being associated with the color red. The second tribe has something unique. SCP-3838-2 originates from closer to our time, between the 12th and 18th century CE, and they are the only tribe led entirely by women. This matriarchal society participates in all the standard tribal activities, including combat and herding, and their lore speaks of a female warrior who led in the initial great battle thousands of years ago. Their territory is among the largest of the tribes, but little is known about them beyond that. 
They practice a mix of traditional shamanism and Islam, and are known for a ritual hunt with roots in Mongolia. These women warriors are fierce, but not at the center of the conflict. But the tribes that grow closer to the present day hold much more territory. SCP-3838-3 is the current tribe, occupying the land from between 1870 and 2054 CE into the future. It is a simple tribe that seems to have moved closer to a modern system of government. Its Khan leads alongside a collection of lesser governors advising him. The tribe is known for their carpet weaving skills, with their stunning wares being a popular item for bartering in the marketplace. But this group previously held much more territory. Their position as a dominant force is being threatened by a powerful force. And that force is getting closer. SCP-3838-4 is believed to occupy the land from between 2054 and 3000, the longest lasting tribe. And they didn't get there by negotiations and bartering. This tribe is feared by all the other tribes, the only one not welcome in the communal spaces, and it's not hard to see why. They're hostile and warlike, attacking both other tribes and Foundation members. If you look closely at them and are able to survive, you might see that they're dressed in human skins. Those captured by them who survive are likely to wind up as their slaves, which makes their army large and virtually unconquerable. Their traditions are mostly unknown, but they seem focused on a funeral urn they protect at all costs, which they claim contains the body of a fallen enemy. But no empire lasts forever, and something new will eventually rise. SCP-3838-5 took over the space from 3000 to 3020 after the fall of their predecessors, and they couldn't be more different. This small peaceful tribe has few members left and is mostly seen at the marketplace. They're known for being excellent cooks and have good relations with most other tribes. The Foundation is more likely to encounter them in the marketplace than in their own territory which is rapidly shrinking and barely has enough room to farm or to build new settlements. But the tribes were about to take a quantum leap. The source of the strange and powerful weapons at the marketplace was a mystery. Until the Foundation met SCP-3838-6, this tribe ruled from 3020 to 3450 and were closely aligned with their predecessors. A traditional Shiite Muslim group, unconcerned with the mysticism of other tribes, their technology is powerful and advanced, and they work with a secretive group called the Empire for the Reclamation of Islamic Artifacts. Due to their advanced culture and intellectual nature, they're the most common point group for interaction with the Foundation. They are friendly and cooperative, and the Foundation is careful to keep it that way rather than meet them on the battlefield. The next tribe, however, is a mystery. Originally, SCP-3838-7 existed from 3500 to 4100 CE. They were a powerful and long-lasting empire, but every empire ends, and this one came to a crashing halt in a conquest that eliminated all their territory and left them as simple nomads, lost in time and mostly existing within the marketplace and as refugees within the other tribes. Or when it comes to the warlike SCP-3838-4, as captives, the majority can be found within the small group of SCP-3838-5. But the question remains, what brought this tribe to an end? Most stories of this period attribute the destruction to SCP-3838-4, but recent events may tell a different story. SCP-3838-8 is the most mysterious tribe of all, and for good reason. We do not know when they begin or end. They come from the far future, and none of the other tribes communicate with them. In fact, no members of SCP-3838-8 have ever been encountered. However, all of the other tribes know of them, and many refer to them as the enemy at the Great Battle. But no tribe hates them more than the warriors of SCP-3838-4, who know them as the enemy above all enemies. And unfortunately, due to SCP-3838-4's warlike nature, the Foundation has learned very little about this mysterious rival. That is, until 2011. Contact with SCP-3838-4 is rare, especially non-hostile contact, which is why it was a surprise when a member of the tribe approached the nearby research base with no army and no weapons. He claimed to be an envoy, a rarity for a tribe with little use for diplomats, 
but he wanted to speak with the site director, and thus he was granted an interview with Dr. Rizvi. The tribesman was uncommunicative and reserved at first. It seemed as though he was having trouble trusting Dr. Rizvi, but after a bit of prodding by the doctor, the envoy warmed up to him and began to speak. What he shared was shocking. There was a long history of mistrust between the Foundation and SCP-3838-4, with many deaths on both sides. But the envoy was now insisting that there had been a purpose for their raids. He even seemed to regret the killings of other tribes and referred to them as brother. But he was there for a purpose. He wanted to talk about the great battle, and he referred to the aftermath, this strange place out of time not as a tribe or as a territory, but as a prison. He claimed that they were imprisoning something in a pocket of time and something else, another part of the whole in another reality. And they were the only ones who knew. They guarded it ruthlessly, and they guarded it alone. Their only partner in this lonely battle was SCP-3838-7, and their tribe was gone now. Their burden was such that the other tribes would see them as bloodthirsty monsters, but they were anything but. They were the only ones keeping the actual bloodthirsty monsters at bay. At least, that was what the story he gave while wearing the skins of his enemies. It was impossible to make a firm deal because of the lack of information, but the envoy was desperate. He claimed that he was bound by a higher power to not tell the full story, but he asked the Foundation to serve as an intermediary to help them unite the tribes. His desperation was clear. Dr. Rizvi was still skeptical, but he agreed to meet with the other tribes. In the end, the tribes were able to receive agreed-upon concessions, and in return, SCP-3838-4 stopped its campaign of warlike expansion. All seemed to be well, until a new document was discovered. Foundation operative John Callahan was involved in the marketplace period during the 19th century, and he wrote down a translation of a song he heard repeatedly. While it was known by many tribes, legend has it that it originated with SCP-3838-8, one of the only known pieces of culture from the mysterious tribe. It spoke of a mysterious being named the Crimson Khan, who would one day return when seven seals were opened. They forget the hollowed words upon the death of time. May they share the fate of those who deny to me what's mine. They forget the howling chains that bind me safe away. One of many old Chenyans forgotten in this way. They forget the steel swords they use to cast me down. They shall not forget again before my flaming crown. They forget the seven brides that wait for my return. Such loveliness is lost upon the children of the urns. They forget the seals that are used to keep me still. Only one remembers and is not bent to my will. Seven seals, seven tribes, six reclaimed, one shall be mine, and ere the end of all your days, the Crimson Khan shall ride." But who is the Crimson Khan? Researchers note a lot of similarities between this unknown entity and the Scarlet King, one of the SCP-001 proposals. Could they be one and the same? The Foundation is keeping a close eye on the situation, with a perimeter established one kilometer away from the tribe's territory. One entrance is available for contact between the Foundation and the tribes, but the perimeter is heavily armed in case SCP-3838-4 gets aggressive again, or in case any other threat emerges. The Foundation is on diplomatic relations with the current occupying tribe of SCP-3838-3, but there are continued efforts at engaging the tribe that will be their successor. The Foundation has a hands-off policy with regards to conflicts between the tribes, with one exception. The Foundation is keeping a close eye out for any members of SCP-3838-8, with orders to detain and interrogate them on site. But none have ever been seen, and in fact the Foundation doesn't even know what to look for. If they are as powerful as believed, given their feared reputation, they may already be here, infiltrating the other tribes. But the Foundation is determined to learn more about them, and whatever they're bringing with them. They just hope to do it before the Crimson Khan, whoever he may be, makes his presence known.
For more on another mysterious and dangerous group, check out SCP-1861 The Crew of the HMS Wintersheimer, or watch SCP-4007 Unit 731 for another unusual group of warriors.